Fellow Parktonians, greetings from Los Angeles, California. I'm truly sorry that I cannot be celebrating our 50th reunion of the class of 1960 with you, but it just has not been possible for me to be there at this time. It's hard to believe that 50 years has passed since our school days at Parktown Boys High. A lot of water has flown under the bridge for all of us in so many different ways. But I will never forget those idyllic days at Parktown. We made good friends and those friendships have remained over the years and I can honestly say that my best friends still remain my friends from Parktown Boys. Ruan Wood was good enough to provide me with a guest list of who would be attending the reunion and some of the names brought back some very fond memories of us participating and enjoying playing sport at Parktown. I shared many enjoyable times playing sport with Mick Badham, Basil Brook, Beryl Bean and David Starfield. And I hope that you guys still have the same enthusiasm for sport as you did then, back in the 1960s. I've always been interested in knowing how my old school friends have fared and was always encouraged to hear such glowing reports of you guys. But the bottom line is that Parktown boys can be very proud of the final product it let loose on the world. And when I look at my own children who grew up and attended school in here in Los Angeles, California where we live, I feel somehow that they have been deprived by not experiencing the very good times that we had at school together in Johannesburg. I still have such indelible memories of the good-natured raw thing, a term that you never hear over here but which is unique to South Africa that went on with our teachers. Names that will always remain in my memory. Mr. Aspos or Tubby as he was affectionately called. And I can still remember the voice of Clev, our latter master, telling us to write it out 50 times when he couldn't remember how to decline a noun or conjugate a word properly in Latin. And there was Jock Cameron, Edgar, the boss, our science teacher Percy and Elliot Wolfe and being sent to Mr. Yates, the headmaster, for cuts, something that would be very much frowned upon here in the United States, where moderate chastisement is certainly something that's a board. I remember cadets every Thursday morning and the wonderful opportunities we had to participate in sport, whether it was cricket, rugby, hockey, swimming, tennis, or what, all the other sports. Our values, work ethic, and morality were all shaped during our years at Parktown and I sincerely believe that Parktown did a great job in preparing us for the future. I've always had very fond memories of South Africa and I always say you can take me out of South Africa but you can never take South Africa out of me. South Africa did such a good job in hosting the World Cup and we all felt very proud of our South African heritage when we watched it on television. People who went to see the World Cup in South Africa returned with such glowing reports and told me that how they raved about South Africa and were most impressed with the absolute hospitality that South Africans show to visitors. Now, over the last 50 years, we have followed our respective paths where life has taken us and mixed with the joys of becoming parents and for some of you guys, grandparents as well, we've also suffered the pain of losing loved ones as we have got older. So where has life's path taken me these past 50 years? There's an old Jewish saying that if you want to see if God had a sense of humor, tell him your plans. Now if you had told me 50 years ago that I would end up practicing law in Los Angeles, California, I would have thought that you were crazy. But that's how things, have, how things have worked out. I'm now married to Linda, who we went to Parkdown Girls High, but she's 10 years younger than me, so we never got to know each other during the school days. We met when I was practicing as an advocate at the Johannesburg Bar, and she was a secretary. We immigrated to the United States in 1981 to Los Angeles, and that's where we've been living ever since, except for an 18-month stay back in South Africa in 1991. When we came to the United States, I was fortunate enough to start my legal career in Los Angeles with O'Melveny and Myers, 
one of the preeminent law firms in the United States. It represents major corporations and governments and it exposed me to a type of law that I've never seen practiced before. Large type cases and I never knew that cases could be so large. So it was quite an adjustment to be one of 30 lawyers working on just one case for several years on end. As an aside, Melvaney represented Exxon in the Exxon Valdez oil spill trial in Alaska and I was fortunate enough to be one of the lawyers on that case. We all moved up to Alaska for the duration of the trial, which lasted for about four months. That was very different to the cases I cut my teeth on back in South Africa as a prosecutor in the Ruderport Magistrates Court. Linda and I have two children now, Adam who is 22 and Kelly who is 20. Adam recently graduated from college and Kelly is still at college. When Adam and Kelly were big enough to take care of themselves, Linda went back to law school and is now a member of the California Bar. We now have our own law practice in Woodland Hills, and would you believe it, it's called Gordon and Gordon. Regrettably, but as a lawyer in the United States, one works much longer hours than a lawyer does in South Africa. So I miss those days of practice in South Africa. But in ending off, I want you to know that if any of you get the opportunity to come to Los Angeles, please look me up. I would, be light, I would be delighted to be your host. We as South Africans share something very special and unique, and all the more so as alumni from Parktown Boys High. Stay well, my fellow Parktonians, and enjoy the party.